Mirrorless cameras are awesome, right? Do we all agree? We all agree, right? You know what else is awesome? Lighting. Man, when you can, when you get control over your light and you really start, whew, it looks so good. It's kind of like this. Much better. You know, there's a lot of really good mirrorless cameras on the market today. There's just like, you can't even buy a bad camera today, right? But still, we will argue, we will say this camera's better than that camera and the specs here versus the specs here, the ergonomics, all, all that foolishness. But one thing we can agree on is that mirrorless cameras, man, they just offer some features that like, you just never even thought would be possible just a few years ago. And here they, they all have them. So one of the biggest things that's different from a DSLR to a mirrorless is, I mean, besides the whole mirror thing, the EVF, right? The electronic viewfinder. I mean, it's awesome. Being able to see your exposure all the time is, it's great, right? Right? But what about when it's not so great to always see your exposure? What about that? Is that, is that ever a problem for you? So I actually included this in my five tips for Fujifilm users that are coming over from DSLR, but it's not a Fuji specific thing. It's just a mirrorless thing. So I figured I'd make a separate video and hopefully maybe help you guys get past some confusion. I know when I had my G7, uh, my Panasonic G7 was the first like mirrorless camera I owned. And man, this had me stumped for quite a while. It like kind of blew my mind. And then the solution was super easy, but Sometimes you just need someone to point it out to you. So I hope that this video helps. So first, let me show you what the problem is. So as you saw from those clips, we have Mr. Zuma here today who's going to be modeling for us. Um, thank you for taking time out of your schedule, Mr. Zuma, for being here. You know, Zuma has a, he's got a nice chocolatey skin tone or fur tone, um, so I'm glad he was able to, to make it today. Um, but yeah, so let's jump right into it. So I'm going to be lighting Zuma with a strobe with a beauty dish, camera right, and basically I'm gonna show you when this will be something you need to know. So if we look at the screen right now on the X-H1, I have this set to the ambient light levels. We're here in my basement, I have these fluorescent lights turned on, and you know, that's just so I can see down here. Um, but you know how to set up your camera for strobes, right? So let's just go ahead and do that. So we're at 1 30th of a second, F1.8, ISO 640. Not at all what we're gonna be shooting today. So let's go ahead and dial in our settings. I'm gonna do uh, 1 250th of a second, which is my sync speed. I'm gonna drop my ISO down to 200, just so that it's as low as it can go. And I'm going to change my f-stop to 5.6. Nice, solid number for a prime lens. Um, so, you see the problem we run into. Once I plug in my settings for what I know is gonna be a good look with the strobe, our screen goes black. So, how do we see what Mr. Zuma is doing? Well, fortunately today he's staying still. But imagine if you had to find his eyes. I mean, look at this. What do you, what do you even do? I don't know. So you can hit the shutter button and it'll focus and all that. And now if we take a picture, bam, look at that. You know, it looks good. I'd probably put a reflector in there, maybe a, maybe a little fur light on the back. But for today, let's just say this is good enough. So now we know that our settings are good. We don't even need to adjust our strobe. Everything is perfect. It's dialed in the way we want. The problem is we can't see our talent. So now how do we do this? If we were using a DSLR, we could dial in our settings and you're still looking through the optical viewfinder. So all the light that I have going on down here would be enough for me to see my subject. And when I take the picture, the settings are already dialed in. It would look good. With mirrorless though, because we're constantly seeing the exposure in real time, this is what our camera is set to. And so this is what we see, nice black screen. So let's go ahead and fix this. Let's jump into our menu. Let's go to our wrench icon, go to screen setup. Let's 
Let's go to the second page and here it is. Preview exposure white balance in manual mode. So right now the camera is previewing the exposure and white balance. It's showing us what everything is set to. The second setting preview white balance means that it will not preview the exposure. It will only preview the white balance. So it will normalize the exposure and make everything look good for us, but it will also show us the white balance. Um, the last option is to just turn it off completely. So this will normalize the white balance and normalize the exposure um, on the screen. So it's not gonna change our exposure settings, but it's just gonna brighten up our screen and make the colors look good so that we can see. So let's select that. Let's go back out. And now you see, we can see Mr. Zuma. So our settings are still the same, 250th, 5.6, ISO 200. So when we take a picture, it still looks the same because our settings are dialed in. All we've told the camera to do is ignore the exposure settings and just brighten up my LCD till it looks good. That's basically what you're telling it. Brighten up the LCD and also fix the color until it looks good. Because we have our strobe is daylight balanced, so I have my white balance set to the daylight setting. Um, but down here, these ugly fluorescent lights are not daylight balanced. So I'll show you, if I were to preview the white balance, it looks kind of funky. It's kind of ugly. It's not a big deal because we know when we take the picture, it's going to be right. But sometimes while you're shooting, you want it to look good. So then you turn it off and now it's going to pick the right white balance. Not in your settings, but just on your screen. So this is how you can shoot in the dark, basically. Now I, you may notice I have it mapped to a function button here on my X-H1 because I never use my exposure lock and I do use this setting a lot. So I've actually put it onto one of my function buttons right here. Um, so being in a studio environment, this is really gonna over exaggerate the problem, like it being completely black, that's pretty extreme, um, which you will run into in the studio. But if you're shooting wedding receptions or if you're photographing somebody outside and you're trying to blend a little bit of ambient light with some flash, this can be a problem too. It might not be a completely black screen because you're, you've got a little bit of ambient coming in with your settings, but it may be too dark for you to easily see what's going on, see what action is happening, where your focus point is, and if everything's in focus. So for me, this is my go-to. Once I dial in my settings at a reception, I then push my button and just let it brighten the screen up for me so I can see everything because I already know that the image is gonna look good because I've dialed in the settings. And that's it. It really is as simple as just assigning it to a function button, maybe putting it in your quick menu or the my menu, whatever you're gonna use, and basically just knowing that it's there. Once you know it's there, it's pretty easy to get around this problem. Like I said, I assigned it to a prominent function button on my X-H1 and on my X-T3 because I pop in and out of the preview mode all the time. Maybe it's different for you. Maybe it's something you'll put at the bottom of your quick menu or lower in your my menu, but at least now you know it's there. So now that we've talked about the problem and how to fix it, I just real quick wanted to run through the different names that manufacturers are using for it. So like you saw in the video, the Fujifilm version is called the Expo Comp slash White Balance. It's usually found in your settings, screen settings, and then you'll find it in there. If you're using a Panasonic, a Lumix camera, when I was using the G7 and when I've used the GH5, it's in different places. You'll need to hunt around for it. Um, and if you know exactly where it is, maybe you could leave it in the comments and help us all out. Um, but Panasonic calls it Constant Preview. So once you find Constant Preview, same thing. You can map that to a function button, or at least I think I could on my G7, right? You can probably do that. Uh, but it's constant preview. Once you have that, you can put it in your quick menu and you'll be good to go. Also, Olympus cameras are gonna be called the same thing, constant preview. I don't know if that's like a micro four thirds thing or... Now for Canon users, they call it exposure simulation um, in live view. So if you find that setting, and again, I'm, I'm not really trying to tell you exactly where it is because 
from generation to generation and from model to model, these things change. So just keep that in mind. But for Canon, they call it exposure simulation. And I believe you can check it for both live view and for video mode, I'm pretty sure. For Sony mirrorless cameras, they call it live view display. Again, I don't know where in those Sony menus that's going to be because you're, you're struck. I'm sorry, Sony people. Your cameras are really cool, but man, your menus, that is all, that's all on you. You, you find it and then you will know. Now, Nikon users, it was actually very hard to find out what Nikon calls this feature. Eventually, I downloaded the Z6 instruction manual and basically looked through that, searched through that. I eventually found it. Um, it's called Apply Settings to Live View, which once you hear it, it's like, oh, that makes sense, but it's very different from the naming that other companies give it. Uh, but yeah, once you do that, once you turn that on, it's going to apply the settings to live view. If you turn it off, then it's just going to normalize things like we saw in the video. So that's about it. I think I covered all the main manufacturers. I mean, if you're shooting with something besides that, then I'm really sorry. Samsung, I don't, sorry. But now you know that it's a thing and maybe you can Google it and find out what's going on. So again, when you're shooting a studio session with strobes, if you're shooting a reception and most of your lighting is coming from off-camera light sources, this is an invaluable feature for you to know and for, and for you to know really well so that it can eliminate a lot of headache, a lot of frustration uh, while you're there actually shooting. So if you found some value in this video, please hit the like button, the thumbs up button. Um, if you thought this video was terrible and horrible, then you should just leave now and don't do anything. But thanks for the view. Thank you for that. Um, if you enjoy this content, consider subscribing. I like to put out videos whenever I get to it. But most of my videos are Fujifilm, but I'm trying to do more like general, like just camera stuff. You know what I'm saying? So thanks again for watching. See you next time. Peace.